and unusual uh, I'm talking about uh, procedure, procedural things. Uh, it's been unusual for us today uh, in so much as we started uh, this morning. Uh, we started this effort of worship with a play uh, and it was a uh, it was a marvelous presentation. Yeah. Yeah. A marvelous presentation, and uh, I, I know that you could tell uh, uh, that the participants in the play they really enjoyed. Uh, yeah. And, and, and now, but but you know you know the thing about the thing about plays and. Uh, and those kinds of things, it, 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 uh, as we are as we are allowed uh, to take some time to uh, laugh and humorize some of the situations, uh, it doesn't take away from the fact that even though they were exaggerated to the point of humor, it doesn't take away from the fact that those kinds of personalities exist in our midst. And, uh, and sometimes uh, you, you just never know uh, it, when you get an opportunity to play to play somebody, you might be playing yourself. <laughs> Perception of, of, 
this particular fellow. Uh, Louis Farrakhan is, uh, in fact, one of the, uh, as I can uh, survey it, he is a very intelligent man. Okay. <clears throat> I am not, I am not, I don't, I don't have a problem with saying that about uh, Louis Farrakhan as a non-believer because the devil is intelligent. Mm -hmm. so, so don't take it, don't put anything to that that's not there. Uh, folk that want to play the devil cheap, uh, that's how come so many folk on bus here are wide open. Uh, but, but the devil is, is a bad man. And, uh, and so are so are we uh, the instance of we have these people that don't believe Christ, they don't believe the word of God, that are some very intelligent, smart people, as that kind of thing goes. So, so this is this is nothing to his intelligence. However, I, I witnessed his his uh, he was bringing a message to some of his folk, and he happened to acknowledge that there were some Christians uh, present. He gave them a loving, you know, how you doing and that kind of thing. And how he was glad that they were there and all that kind of thing. And then he goes on to make fun of their Lord. And now, I'm glad I wasn't there. Uh, because I would have had to, just like, and, and, and here. Uh, if, if you are bold enough to mock the Lord, then I'm bold enough to comment with regard to your mockery. And it has nothing to do with how brave I am or anything like that. It has everything to do with my love for our God and our Savior. Now, Louis Icon, uh, in the midst of those saints, uh, had a problem with the Lord rising on the third day. So what I would like to do is, for those of you that don't know, I would like to help you with responding to someone that would have a, a point of unbelief and misunderstanding <coughs> of the three day, the third day resurrection. Okay? All right. Um, so it is, first of all, I'd like to say that if you don't study the Bible, you cannot defend your faith. If you don't study the Word of God, you cannot be a defender of your faith. The word of God says it was it was Peter in particular that said that that we ought to be ready to give an answer, a reasonable answer for those that would inquire of our faith. Okay, if you do not study the Bible, now Louis Farrakhan does not study the Bible. Louis Farrakhan reads the Bible. Okay. Okay. So many of us do not study the Bible. We read the Bible. And there's a great difference in studying the Word of God over against reading it. Because out of all of the things that you have read, how much of those, how many, or how much of what you have read have you, have you attached to your life? Okay? Louis Farrakhan and those that have the mindset of him have not taken into consideration this fact, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm, then I'm going to ask you, we're going to turn to several passages, and that's how I say it'll be a little unusual. Now, you, if you don't have a Bible, then you can 
uh, write them down if, if you can to, if you can to know it. Uh, you can write these passages down uh, and and uh, and refer to them later on or no. Okay. Um, first of all, I would call your attention. I'll tell you first. <coughs> when Jesus says, "I'm going to go into the grave." And I'm going to be in the grave for three days and three nights. The Pharisees asked the Lord for a sign. And he said that no sign shall be given except the sign of who? Jonah. Right? As Jonah was in the belly of the fish. And now, the Bible does not say that it was a whale. Okay? The Bible says that God prepared a fish. Okay? So, so then, so then, and, and have that straight too, because people say, well, you know, I'm a whale, I'm a whale. The Bible didn't say it was a whale. The Bible says it was a great fish. It was a fish. And such as it is, uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 39, Okay. Is everybody there? Twelve, right. Is everybody there? I'm going to start reading over verse 38. It reads, I'm reading from the New King James Version and it reads, <coughs> Then certain of the scribes of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. In the... It says well. In the other book it says well. That's wrong. Mine says great fish. Don't worry about... Okay. Somebody... Yes, indeed. I just want to see where you're paying attention. Some of y'all actually got well out there. Okay, anyhow, as Jonah uh, was three days, three nights in the great fish's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. All right, everybody see that? Okay, then. I want you to turn with me. Uh, to Esther, I know it's going to take some folk men to get this. Uh, Esther chapter 4. That's in the Old Testament. <laughs> Esther chapter 4. Fast ye for me, 
and neither eat nor drink three days. Everybody see that? <coughs> Night or day. Everybody see that? <coughs> I also and my maidens will fast likewise. So will I go to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Okay, now this is what it, now everybody saw three days and three nights, right? Mm -hmm. Now I want you to read with me chapter 5, verse 1. Now watch this. Now it came to pass on the what? Third day. Does everybody see that? It came to pass on the third day, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. Y'all may be seated. We're going to read a little more and I want to stand up all that time. Okay, here, this is what I want you to, to gain from this passage. Esther said, tell Mordecai and the folk that are with him to fast for three days. Did you see that? Yeah. Don't eat anything day or night. Did you see that? Yeah. Now, if Esther actually meant three, three days and three nights, she would be going to see the king on the fourth day. It's in the text. Yeah. Three. So then, what I'm saying to you is, is that in order for you to understand what Jesus meant when he said three days and three nights for the Jew, that meant any part of a day. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is called... And it, an I D I O M A T I C case of understanding. It is an idiom, and what that is is if I, if I stand before you and say you, you say you say what well, how you doing? If I say I'm chilling, if I if I say I'm chilling, my mother you you do know what that means. <laughs> Because, listen, this is what I'm, because now, as you, you know that I don't mean I'm up here cold. Right? right? If, if, and so there are, there are, there are, uh, phrases or, or terminologies, if you will, that we use that have to do sometimes with ethnicity, yes. But it is and depends on how the word is used and how you think about how it's used. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So for the Jew, when they heard the sign of Jonah, and if you read that story, what you're going to find is, is that any part of a day in the Jewish mind was pertaining to that day. So then, just as Esther said here, three days and three nights, but the Bible plainly shows you that on the third day, she put on her clothes and was going to see the king. All right? Okay, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Um, Go with me back to the Gospels. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Let's go to Matthew 27. And verse 62.
Verse 62 reads, Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together to Pilate, saying, Sir, remember that deceiver said, while he was alive, now watch this. Now these are this is this is how they thought about what Jesus said. Okay. Saying, Sir, we remember that this deceiver, and they're talking about Jesus, said while he was yet alive. Y'all see God. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Now watch this. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the what? Third day. If they thought it was going to be the fourth day, why did they tell him to make it secure until the third day? Is that in the Bible? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So they understood that Jesus was not talking about he was going to rise the fourth day. Is that in the Bible? Yeah. So watch this. So, as they understood our Lord, any part of the day was considered the day. Mm -hmm. So when they ask you, did Jesus do exactly what he said? You can affirmatively say, According to the word of God, yes. Jesus rose the third day. Yes. Now, also in that text, what I want you to understand is, so that you can get the days right, the Bible says that the, the, the next day that followed, now watch this, that followed the day of preparation. Now, the day of preparation was indeed, in fact, a... Friday. All right? The Gospel of John, chapter 19, says that that day was a high day. And let, let me, let me, let's, let's turn it right there. So we can find it. Because I, I want to put a little, I want to put a little something, something on that uh, for you. Um, uh, let me see. Go to go to verse. Uh, yeah, John, John verse, uh, John nineteen, verse thirty one. And while you're turning there, one of the things that made the death of our Lord especially memorable, especially memorable, I should say, is the fact that when Jesus was crucified, <clears throat> it was a special Sabbath day in that week. The Jews only enjoyed this particular high day every X amount of years during Passover, the Sabbath would actually fall on one of the feast days. Now, the Jews had strict rules regarding the Sabbath. There were some Sabbaths that you could actually do some stuff in. You could, you could cook. Uh, you could uh, you could see after a, a uh, uh, an injured animal or something or some uh, situation that was emergency. But now this particular Sabbath, this particular week, John says that it was a now how is translated in your Bible? But he says that it was a what a high day. It was a special Sabbath coming up. It is the day of preparation. It's also written here in John. It is the day of preparation to soul. Joseph of Arimathea, who until that point was a secret in my 
Jeremiah and, and my world Christ was a secret follower, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who were, uh, uh, and, and, and Nicodemus, he was actually on the Sanhedrin. He was actually a part of the, the high council, if you will, of, of theological teachers of his time. Well, after Jesus had died, because it's the day of preparation, a Friday, okay? And they cannot do any work on the high day. Do y'all get that? So what they do is, and now, it's something else how God does things. God uses the fact that his son is dead to bring out, yeah, some believers that were hiding their faith. Do you feel it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the Nicodemus the, the didn't tell anybody that he was a follower. Joseph of Arimathea, a rich, rich fellow. Yeah, he didn't tell anybody. But because, watch this, they hadn't known Jesus long. But they knew him long enough to love him so. And so what they said, they overcame their fear of the ridicule of their peers. Do, do you hear me? See, now some of y'all, some of y'all, you don't want nobody to know that you're holy. You don't, see, you don't, you don't really talk holy talk. You don't want to blend in with the masses. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, they, they got together and they said, man, They saw their Lord hanging on that cross, yeah. stripped yeah. of all raiment. Yeah. 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 And because they couldn't stand to see that, they said, we're going to get together and go and ask the king if we could take his body down. Jesus that has come here to, to our landscape, uh, he has changed 
And when they saw what they saw, their love for Christ gave them the courage that they needed to stand and be counted as a follower and believer of Jesus Christ. And they took his body and they put it in and another thing too, Joseph put Jesus in his family's tomb. Is, is Jesus in your family? He took Jesus to his family plot. Yeah. Yeah. And they laid him there. And now the high priest, yeah, they went to Pilate and said, now you know what he said. He said that he's going to rise the third day. So I hope Mr. Farrakhan gets on the well. I, I, I hope he's on the well and, and he gets this understanding that, that Jesus rose the third day just like he said he would. And, and, and now, and, and, and we don't like to talk too much about it, but see now, the church is proof of his resurrection. We are, we are proof that Jesus lives and, and now watch this. The greatest way for the legacy of Christ, the name of Christ, all of the Jesus rising business to have been put to rest was for them to get a body. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to have, if, if you want to fix the thing,
these folk that you would put your trust in as, as being honorable in their effort. And, and, and now mind you, I understand that no man is perfect. All of us make mistakes. But watch this. I'll never mistakenly lead you in the way that I'm saying to you that the Bible upholds. I'm not talking about making a mistake about a name, about a pronunciation. Or I'm talking about the way that we should go. And if you are not concerned about the way, you better check yourself. You saw the demonstration about the train, and, and it is, it is analogous, it is analogous about the day that is surely on its way now. There's a day coming that you don't want to be here. You want to receive and be able to hear that, that trumpet of the Lord. God says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the hollow of the trumpet of an archangel. Yeah. And the dead in Christ they're going to get up first. And we that still remain. And that's another thing too that you should really love about our God. See, see some folk, some folk are talking about, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to tell God all about it. I'm going to tell God how you treat me. I'm, I'm going to, no you ain't. <laughs>
you teach your children that truth. <clears throat> so that when they become of age, they'll have that already within them. And, and see now, it's the thing that, it's the word of God that you get within. That the, the time of life will give you application for power. You get, you get the word of God. You, you get the word of God and, and the truth of it. And, and when it comes, when it comes time for you to stand for him. Ooh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He told, he, he told the disciples, he said, I'm, yes, sir. I'm sending you out. I don't want you to take anything with you. Don't, don't take a notebook with some notes in it. Don't take special holy code. See, some people travel around and they got these holy stuff, you know. You know, they, they gonna put, and, oh, hey, I'm, I'm talking about what's real. They, gonna, they got some oil in the bottle. They won't even take this oil. <laughs> put that oil. Well, well, watch this here. You, what, what you need to know that there ain't nothing in the oil. <laughs> and, and that's how come. Ooh, Father. I don't need oil. No, no. When I lay my hands on the sick. See, see, there, watch this. Well, you know, no the Bible talks about, you know, putting the putting oil. But watch this here. So many folk putting oil on somebody and don't know what the oil is for. What do you, if, if you ask the question, what's in that oil? And I'm not talking about asking just to, you know, to, to be smart. I'm talking about, but now, somebody, somebody want to lay hands, you know. Somebody want to lay hands on you. I don't let everybody put their hands on you. make me have to fight. <laughs> but now, now we have the instruction of the Word of God with regard to the Spirit of God that lives, that dwells in you. And so, what we are doing, as we are, as we are studying the Word of God, and now I, I make it a point to say, is that in the Bible? That's right. That's my, that's my MO. Is that in the Bible? Did you read that in the Bible? And y'all can't help but say, yeah, yeah, we read that in the Bible. So you understand my preference. So when they ask you, how did Jesus rise in three days? You tell them he was thinking and speaking as a Jew. Any portion of the day was to the Jewish mind the day. The evidence of the word of God is that Jesus never said. And now, I, I wrote them down, and if you want the text, I'll be glad to give them to you. Every time that Jesus said he was going to rise, he said the third day. If he meant the fourth day, <coughs> why did he say? <coughs> Do y'all hear me? Amen. You can answer the question and give the answer Jesus said what he would do and he did it like he said. Amen. Just like he did on that third day when those women went to the tomb to finish preparing his body. When they got to the tomb the body was not there. <clears throat>
but they met a couple other folk. <coughs> and they had a they had a they had a, a great question for Jesus and I'm not gonna do it this. Uh, the angel said uh, to the folk that, that got that he said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Sometimes, sometimes uh, when you look at a, when I look at a church that's got a couple thousand folk in there, or even like this assembly here, <coughs> uh, I make it a point not to look for the living. <laughs> <laughs> Trust Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's anyone that does not have a church home. There is power in the name of Jesus. We ask you now to come and join this fellowship. There is power in As we come together. Perform all of the word of God. Whatever you are, whatever you're dealing with, how, however you're dealing with it, Jesus says that you ought to come now and give him charge over your issues of life. Won't you come and share with us? 